Welcome to the Redback Revival Sing Along Show. Uh, we invite you to get your old Redback hymnal out and sing along with our choir that we've got assembled today. We've got some amazing singers here. And uh, boy, we're going to just open the show with a good old convention song written in 1944 by Dad Spear from Nashville, Tennessee. We're going to sing number 292, Where the Milk and Honey Flows. back to the Redback Revival sing-along show and glad to have my friend Dr. John Turner here today to here. helping lead the choir some and uh, John I love this old Redback hymnal it's every week we uh, brag on it and talk about all these great songs and what a good choir we've got yes, today great assembled choir. singing yeah. with us and uh, you know what they're so good let's let's try something okay do you remember a couple of years before he passed away, Dr. Jerry Goff, who yeah. our, vis uh, our viewers will recall, uh, he and little Jan Buckner Goff had a show uh, here based in Atlanta, and they yeah. recorded yeah. it here in this studio. But um, he came to our church. Yes, he did. One Saturday afternoon, yeah. and we were having a sing-along, very similar to this, just singing out of the old red back. And he come up and he said, Charlie, he said, let me lead one. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, like saying, put me in, coach, put me in. <laughs> well, like, like I was a coach. But anyway, Jerry Goff led this old song, number 378. And I dare say most of the people that day really wasn't familiar with it. But before it was over with, he had yeah, them he people singing sing to the top of their lungs. And the glory fell in that yes, place. People were shouting. We had a great time that day with Dr. Jerry. And um, so in honor and in memory of him, uh, let's see if we can throw this well, choir curve and see if they can do 378 when I see the blood. Sounds good. Kevin, give us a key. When I see the blood. Yeah. Hey. 
number 310, Glad Reunion Day. of a newlywed. It's Somebody's, real. It's real. Some you you talk somebody into marrying you? Yeah, she's a pretty little gal. She's about this high. Yeah. Looks at me like I put stars up in the sky and whatnot. Yeah. She's pretty awesome. I, yeah. You know, I was thinking, my great grandpa told me that the first time that he got old enough to go courting and he found this little gal that was in the community that he liked and uh, he went home from church one Sunday and yeah. made sure his hair was slicked back. Your family went to church? Yeah. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Uh, <laughs> just saying, just saying. Anyway, uh, so, so they went to church. Yeah, they went to church, and, and it, so they got done. He got his hair slicked back after church that Sunday, and he grabbed him a handful of little wildflowers, and he took off to go see this little gal. And he said, when I come up in the front yard, he said, she was sitting up on the swing, working on a yarn ball, you know, and he said, I was already nervous as a cat at the dog show anyhow, because I didn't know what to say, and he said, so uh, I walked up in the yard, and he said, I looked down to the other end of the porch, and there was this old tomcat sitting down there, and see, he was preening himself, you know what I'm talking about, where he's licking right up under his chin, you know? Yeah. And he said, well, that's something I could talk about. You know, he said, so I looked back up at her and I said, boy, I wish I could do what that cat's doing. And he said, we both turned around and looked back. And he said, this time, old Tom had that one back leg sticking straight up in the air. And uh, he was, he was, you know, cl cleaning himself a little bit. And uh, he said, she never missed a lick, man. Mm. He said, she went right back to wrapping that yarn, and she yep. said, well, you might want to pet him first, because he can be just a little bit mean. Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Joey, Joey, Joey. You may, you may sell, tell another one? No, I, I, look, I'm glad the preacher's here. We might just need to, well, to kneel in the altar here and pray for you. Right. John actually, actually 
rode with them to church. Yeah. My great grandpa and grandma. Yeah, sure did. He did. Yeah, yeah. He did. I remember. Yeah, he's I, a good. I wasn't there. I don't yeah, he's. But he told me. Yeah, he's a good. He's a good one. Yeah. Apparently, he's That's good for a free ride. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Apparently. Yeah. Look, go get back in the choir. Right. We're gonna get back in the choir. <laughs> Miss Brenda Kelly, my sweet friend from Hampton, Virginia, Miss. Miss Brenda Kelly's going to sing for you a song. Now, this isn't in the red back hymnal, but this is a good old song that you're going to be able to sing along with. It says, Mansion Over the Hilltop. What does this melody say to you? asked Phoebe Knapp of Francis Crosby. Well, Miss Fan, as she was often called, replied that she heard it say, Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. She went on to just spontaneously recite the entire stanza of the now famous hymn, hymn to her musical friend. Fanny Crosby, who became blind at the age of six weeks old, was a lifelong Methodist who began composing hymns at the age of six. In 1885, she married Alexander Van Alstine. He attended the same school for the blind as she, and together they shared the rest of their lives, loving God, loving each other, and loving beautiful poetry, prose, and, of course, gospel songs. Because of her long life, Fanny Crosby had an extraordinary relationship with several United States presidents and even penned poems in their honor on occasion. She became somewhat of a mentor in the spiritual life of presidents such as 
Martin Van Buren, John Tyler, James Polk, and Grover Cleveland. She also did something that few women of her day were ever allowed to do. She addressed the joint session of Congress on the topic of education for the blind. Her hymns have historically been among the most popular songs of all time. Blessed Assurance was written in 1873 and is noted for being one of the 10 most popular songs ever. This great song was sung extensively in the D.L. Moody and Ira Sankey revivals, both in Great Britain and the U.S. Even today, it is considered the one of the most memorable lyrics and melodies in all of Christendom. Family Fanny Crosby also claimed God's personal revelation as the source for her hymns. Christians throughout the world sing her hymns and confirmed her faith experience as their own. On any given Sunday morning, you can no doubt hear a congregation lift that now familiar refrain, This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. In churches of all sizes, musical persuasions and denominations. So won't you open your church hymnal to page 181, lift your voice as the choir sings this beloved old hymn of the church, Blessed Assurance. Thank you for tuning in today. What a wonderful, wonderful uh, time we've had here uh, just singing these grand old songs. We hope that you've been blessed. And if you have, uh, go to the station's website, www.atc.tv, and you can uh, reach out to the station. Tell them how much you've enjoyed this, if you have. And, and I tell you, it's just such a pleasure, such a pleasure to... Uh, assemble these talented people to sing and, and uh, these fellow musicians and, of course, Brother John helping lead the choir. And I love the hymns of the church, but you know what? I love these old convention yes, songs. Yes. John, let's sing number 116, I'm getting ready to leave this world. Yes. 